All right, welcome guys and gals to freaking laser designs and tutorials. I'm Jonathan Vincent, and today we're going to go over setting up your Illustrator workspace so you can work with your Glowforge more effectively. Let's get started. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is go to settings and then go to units and make sure that everything is in inches. By default, it's going to be in points. We want it to be in inches. Hit OK. The second thing we're going to want to do is to create a new document. So in this case, we hit create new document. We go to print, make sure it's in inches. And then we want to put in uh, a 20 inches by width and 12 inches height. That's the default Glowforge settings. And there we have a document. Now in Illustrator CC 2018, the default uh, Essentials workspace is going to look like this okay so with that said the first thing we're going to want to do in this case to make it you know a little more user friendly is to go to window and bring up bring back our control bar then we're going to go to view and show our rulers again make sure that the units are in inches and not points or pixels then we're going to go to view again and show a grid. Now the reason we do this, uh, it's, it's not a huge deal, but the reason we do this is to make it a little easier on us to see when fills are, are there or not there. The Glowforge basically, uh, operations are determined in the Glowforge by fills and outlines. And if we don't have a grid, let's just go ahead and take it off. If we don't have a grid, excuse me, high grid, and we put a shape down like this, we don't know whether in the case of this uh, white shape, whether that's a fill or whether there's no fill at all. No difference, right? But if we have our grid on, we can definitely see, hey, that's a fill, or hey, no fill. So it's just important um, or, or, or a nice thing to have, okay? It doesn't hurt anything. Uh, plus, it makes everything a little easier when you're, you're doing measurements and stuff. So, for example, uh, I like to go back and forth between putting on the snap to grid and then taking the snap to grid off. Snap to grid's really nice when you want to bring over uh, a guide and know that it's actually snapping to, you know, the, the place you want it to. In this case, uh, one inch by one inch. And then I'll, I'll get my designs and... I'll start by uh, dragging them over and snapping them to the grid, and then I kind of get an idea. So I know this is, you know, uh, basically, if I want this to be, you know, eight inches or seven and a half, I know that it's exact. Okay. Or excuse me, it's not seven and a half because I didn't start at zero. Six and a half. So we know that this is uh, six and a half uh, by six. In any case, uh, I digress. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. We want to turn on our grid. All right, so the next thing we're going to want to do is to get rid of some of these tabs. So in this case, I'm going to get rid of uh, the library tab because I simply don't use it. And then I'm going to want to turn a couple of other things on. So let's go to Windows and let's go to Swatches. And let's bring the swatches over. Uh, I don't use the symbol, so let's close those. Uh, brushes, they show up on the toolbar, so, uh, so let's get rid of uh, that tab. Alright, so now we're left with our properties, our layers, and our swatches. Now, this is a lot of stuff uh, by default, so let's go ahead and get rid of all this. So we highlight them, and we um, actually won't delete because I won't let you delete registration and none, so let's go to white. Uh, click white, hold the shift key, go all the way to the last item, it selects them all, bring it to the trash can, now we've cleaned that up a bit. Okay, so what we want to do now is to add our own little custom Glowforge swatches. So let's go to Open Swatch Library, Other Library, and in this case I've saved uh, a swatch uh, template essentially to my Dropbox. So I'm going to go to my Glowforge folder and put that swatch layout here. Here we go, there it is, and I'll uh, click on those and bring them on in to the Swatch tab. Okay, then uh, what 
you would want to do uh, after you import through it. And by the way, I'll go ahead and link to that file in the description below. That way you can easily import it just like I did. Uh, now I do want to say from the outset that the original Glowforge swatch file uh, template was uh, gotten off the Glowforge forum. I originally found it through a YouTube video by Chris Masto, which I'll link also in the description below. Uh, it just had the standard colors here. Uh, I found that I also used the grays because the grays are very important when you're making 3D depth engraves in Glowforge. So I added that in and cleaned it up all a bit. Okay, and so that file will be linked below. The link to Chris Masto will be below, etc. But I want to give credit where credit's due. Okay, this did not originally come from me, uh, these colors. All right, but it makes it nice and easy. So thank you uh, to the Glowforge community. And you can find that community on the forums on the Glowforge uh, corporate website. All right, so with all that said, once you import it, what you're going to want to do is go back to the hamburger menu save the swatch library as AI, find a location uh, to, to put it. Actually, it'll default to the, um, the, the user library uh, for Illustrator and give it a name. In this case, we'll call it Glowforge. Hit save, click yes, and it's all done. Okay, so now if you were ever in any other kind of uh, workspace and you went to your swatch library, open swatch library, go to user defined, and you'll see the Glowforge um, swatch library sitting there for you. Okay. So there we go. Now the only other things that I like to have are um, Pathfinder. All right, so we'll bring the Pathfinder over, drag it down. You'll see the blue line come across here at the bottom. Click it, and now it's in the sidebar. I like to bring Pathfinder up top. Um, I like to also bring the align up top. Actually, I like to bring it in here. I put it a little too high, and then I get rid of the transform. Um, at this point, once we have our properties, our layers, our swatches, our alignment, Pathfinder, and I like to bring Pathfinder over uh, before alignment because I use it. Basically, these are all, with the exception of properties, these are all the um, in, in the order of importance that I use things. Layers, swatches, Pathfinder, alignment. And then I click the little arrow here. That way it makes it a little cleaner. So now I see everything that I use down the line and they just fly out as I need them. Nice. Okay, so once you have your workspace set up, you're going to want to save that workspace. So uh, go right up here to the workspace drop down, go to new workspace, give it a name. So in this case, we'll call it Glow Forge. Um, and now it's telling me name already exists. That's fine because I already have it set up. I'll hit OK. And boom, now we have a Glow Forge workspace. All right, so we can work through different workspaces. And go to Glowforge, and there we go. Everything's the way you need it. And the last thing we're going to want to do is save this as a template. So we'll go to File, uh, Save as Template. It's not going to let you save in the actual Illustrator um, folders. Uh, we can try it. I'm pretty sure it's not going to work. Yeah, it's not going to let you, so you're going to have to find a new location. So in this case, um, I'm going to go to my uh, Dropbox again, to my Glowforge folder, and I'm going to save this template here, Glowforge. Okay, so now if we're ever going to create another new document, we can go to More Settings, go to Profile, Browse, go to that location where you saved your template. We don't see it, obviously, uh, so we need to go to this drop-down, hit Adobe Illustrator Templates, and there we see the Glowforge template. Open, create document, and now we're going to have you know, the document with the grid and, and everything, the, the properties, layers, swatches, Pathfinder alignment, all in order. Everything's here that we need. All right, so from now on, if we go to create a new um, document, we're going to see the Glowforge is ready for us, ready to go. Boom. All right. And that's basically it. So now we have a nice Glowforge friendly uh, template workspace in Illustrator CC 2018. That's it. If you like this video, uh, please give it a thumbs up. Please share. Uh, we appreciate you and appreciate uh, you taking the time. Thanks.